Matt Smith with Semba. I'm your uh, vice president or your, the superseding queen. And on behalf of Jennifer and Kathy and the rest of the board, uh, we're going to give you a tour of one of the apiaries of Johnston Honey. And this is, who are you? I am Tom Owens, owner of Johnston Honey. And uh, what do you bring along with you in terms of your kit? Um, you know, it's pretty simple. I bring my hive tool. I prefer just a seven inch pry bar, uh, just basic for opening the lids and uh, inner covers. And on certain days I will use my smoker if I know I'm breaking into the hives, but I am pretty hands-free when it comes to tools and equipment I bring with just keep it simple and save some time. Um, we're at a site here today with about 13 hives. I think uh, eight of the 13 were overwintered hives. Uh, so there's a lot of bees in some of these hives. Uh, so that's something I keep an eye on. And I just like this site. It's relatively close to my house. There's a big woodland right across the street. It's protected by pretty good windbreak. And there's, I think, three prairie grasslands within a quarter mile of here. So uh, it's one of my best sites, I feel. Uh, we're going to try lighting uh, my smoker today. One of the tips I saw on YouTube was to fill it with pine needles with some small branches. But once you get it lit, to jam it as full as you can so it just doesn't burn itself out real quickly. And I prefer to use a propane torch just to, to speed it up a bit. I think the propane torch is definitely cheating, in a good way. And normally you don't use smoke if you're just going in for a quick inspection. Yeah, so. I do not. Uh, just it's a time issue with me. I just try to be real gentle going in and suit up when I think I'm going to need it. Otherwise, I'll just wear a hooded jacket if it's light work, like feeding or something like that. All right, that looks like it's going pretty good. We'll just keep puffing that every minute or two just to keep it going. That should help today. Uh, we're going to try to do one inspection at least just to pull some frames out and see how the brood's looking. Okay. So I always try to mark my live hives with some type of marking. So I either put a green spray paint or the year. Uh, and you can see how much more active the live hives are just on the front anyway. And if you take the covers off, uh, there probably be three or four times as many bees at this point. These were installed um, Easter Sunday, the packages. Same bees that the club got, two pound packages. I fed them for uh, two weeks because that first week was uh, really cold. It was probably almost three weeks yeah. of feeding, maybe more. And then I put my first round of supers on uh, about a week and a half ago, especially on the live hives. They might not be putting out a lot of honey right now, but it keeps them from swarming, uh, just giving them that extra space. So you're running uh, two deeps for brood? Yep, two deeps. Um, almost all my uh, brood frames are wooden. Um, it's the most important step of the spring for me, I believe, is especially for new packages coming in, expecting, inspecting those frames so they're the best frames and the best shape in the bottom box so that that queen can get laying eggs right away. I think it's one of the biggest important steps uh, to installing packages. Yep, and then a queen excluder on all the hives, I see? I do. Some are wooden, and I'm just starting to move over to metal excluders, but I use them on all of them. I've had good luck. Um, I've had very little brood in my honey boxes because of that. Yep. So here's one of the packaged ones. Why don't we open that up and just see how things are looking. Just pop the lid off. And like I said, I put the supers on pretty early. I don't think there's just been a whole lot of production yet, but I just like to have it there in case they're getting going. So we'll take that super off. There just really isn't much going on in there yet. And this is a new package from this year uh, with a metal queen excluder. 
Yeah, I've got a metal one and a plastic one. I've got just the two hives mm -hmm. and never get the plastic. Yeah, I like the wooden ones too, but they're just, over time, they just kind of break down. Um, the problem with wood brood frames is you got to just be real careful. You're not popping the top bar off of that. So we do have brood in there and yep. uh, a, lot a lot of pollen, the yellow, right? So that's a great sign. Um, you know, almost every frame has bees on it. I don't take a lot of time in the spring looking for the queen unless I see a hive that's really slow and I'm just trying to see if there's larva or not. I've had great luck with queens with the packages I've gotten. Um, and I just have only had to put in one new queen in four years, or this is my fifth year, uh, which it's maybe just luck, I guess. But I do have some plastic frames in here, I guess. I mix sure. them in. As far as uh, super frames, I do prefer the plastic. The bees seem to like it better. But I inherited a lot of this equipment. So you go with what you have and replace it with what you like. Yeah. So that's a pretty good looking frame. They'll really pick up here is my guess. There's some drone on the bottom there. Um, I haven't seen a queen yet, but uh, there is some larva in this one, if you can see that above the top edge of the... Right in there. Yep, so that's yep. a great sign. So this is a, an A hive, we'll say, for a packaged hive. Um, last year I had all packaged hives because of the harsh winters and 80 hives and I had my best production ever. So if anybody just tells you packages can't produce honey, I don't buy it. But uh, that was a great year last year. I'm sure that was a trend around the area. So we'll put the queen excluder back on. And again, the spacing is very important with the frames. You just want to make sure I run nine frames yep. in all my boxes. Unless I'm putting new frames in into supers, then I might put 10 in just to keep the spacing a little tighter until they draw that comb out, mainly for the next year. And then for a hive inspection like this, at this time, really it's more just the, the bees and looking for the pattern of the, the brood. You don't need to go that deep, right? Yeah, I don't. I'm very non-invasive. Um, I just kind of take the top off, see the number of bees. If it doesn't look right, I'll go to that second box and see where they're at. I have one hive this year that's really on the edge. There's brood in there, but only in the bottom. A fourth of the number of bees we're seeing in this hive. Should you replace that queen or not? Uh, that's a tough question. You might just give them time and they catch up. Yeah. And I'm just still using the standard bottom boards and covers. Uh, there's different feeding covers you can use. Um, when I do my spring feeding, I'll I'll have another empty deep and a bucket of sugar water to feed. So that lasts seven to 10 days. So it saves me a lot of time having a big volume of food for them. Um, and it's really quick to mix up 80 buckets of sugar and get out to all the hives uh, to just swap those out. Um, and that's why I do it with the buckets. It's just quicker and gives me more time. You know, it's about seven days when they're really feeding that that bucket will last. And this year I only gave them two to three buckets depending on how active they were. The, the active live hives probably got three buckets this year. And then we had an early dandelion uh, har or bloom, so there, there was plenty of food for them early. Right now it's kind of the lull. There's not a lot of food out there that we'll pick up here shortly, hopefully. And then you just got to really keep track of your supers. Honey production for me is all about the flow and keeping boxes on when they need them. If you're not there when they're already full, they could swarm or you're missing production because they have nowhere to put it. So stay on top of your supers as you're installing them. And last year there was a point where I was really worried and it took off so fast I could hardly keep up with yeah. getting the next round of supers on. I had up to seven uh, supers on. I could barely reach the top box. And some of those I used deeps because I had no other boxes. And don't put your deeps on the top if yeah. you can help it. They're very heavy. So the which way is south? I mean, in terms um, of placement? Pretty much facing south is right this way. So these hives get relatively early sun, probably by 10 o'clock through almost the whole day. And then they get pretty good shade by 3 o'clock with these. Um, 
and it's been, this is my third year here, and it's one of my best sites. Uh, food availability, there's a stream right across the road, and big woods, and a lot of prairie grasslands close by, so, and the people are great to me that let me stay here. I don't pay them anything but some honey, yep. um, and I feel guilty sometimes, but uh, I can drive my truck right up to these, so when my two other people that help during harvest come, we can load um, the the bee truck up to, uh, oh, look at that. Hey, look at this. Well, that's unexpected. Look at that. Now, I wish I knew if they were mine or not. Well, uh, I mean, they're, you're here right bees aren't owned by anybody and yeah. uh so you you don't if you, oh, since I'm they're not gonna, owned i'm gonna come back and get these bees i'm just not sure if they left one of my hives which is only 30 yards away but yeah. that's pretty short distance um wow look at that huh and i'm guessing the queen is in there you'd like them all on one big branch so you could just <laughs> knock them in there but uh, yeah she's probably kind of right in that yeah. mass right there so I'll come back within an hour. I have four empty brood boxes just a couple miles away that I'll try to get them put into. Um, well, that's you know, an unexpected find, huh? I would have, yeah, who would have thought? I've only seen three or four swarms in four years of beekeeping, one of which was mine that I caught and brought to this site and did okay. Um, the other one, I must not have got the queen, and that one just didn't do well. Um, not a lot of bees, but there's quite a few there. It's kind of an odd shaped tree. It's going to be difficult to get them all in there. Um, any suggestions, Brian? <laughs> yeah, I've only caught a couple of swarms, and they were indeed just the shake them off a limb kind of thing. Yeah. And that's that's my uh, that's my technology. Yeah. Just make sure you get the queen, and then everybody else will just crawl right back yeah, in. We'll see. I, I will definitely be back to give that a try. So let's say this is a swarm that's not mine. What should I do with it? I don't know if it's mine, but if it if it was, I wouldn't want to just put it back in the same location. I'd probably move it to another farm. Oh, uh, yeah. Because I don't know if it's mine or not yet. I'm, I will find out because it's not too hard to find out if half your bees are more left. But we will see. How do you treat for mites? Um, my treatment is mainly in the fall, and just because of time, I've gone to the vaporizing of oxalic acid and Everclear. It's a propane vaporizer like you'd spray bugs in the backyard with. Um, you vaporize each hive for about 12 seconds. It fumigates from the bottom up. It takes about a minute per hive, and you do it once a week for three weeks in a row to take care of any brood mites that might have been missed because it does not treat for brood mites. Mm -hmm. So you got to get through that 21 day cycle by doing it three times. And it's supposedly very effective uh, at killing mites. So that's what I've gone to in the past. I've tried uh, the quick strips and different things and it didn't help me with survival. And it was $800 and I can do it for 50 bucks for 80 hives. Uh, so it's a cost and a time thing. It's just way quicker and we'll see. This was my best wintering year out of the, out of the five, so we'll be trying that. Okay.